Hello Algebra 1. Today we're going to look at uh, factoring special cases. And um, I want to be clear that um, these two special cases that we go over, you can totally do these problems without um, using the pattern and just use the AC method. But using the special cases saves you so much time and often you're more accurate. Often. So, um, yeah, I really encourage you to learn these patterns, especially difference of two squares. Um, it, it's, it's so nice. It saves you so much time. Also, I feel like it's a little more easy to recognize than the perfect square trinomials. So I remember these uh, kind of with some acronyms here. For difference of two squares, I think of dots. And so you'll often see me write dots next to something before I use the difference of two squares pattern. And for a perfect square trinomial, when I see that, I often write pst. And you'll often see me write that next to a problem before I use the pattern. So this kind of shows the um, difference of two squares pattern. It says if you got um, a perfect square minus a perfect square, it always is going to split up into, these are called conjugates. Um, it would be the square root of a plus the square root of b, and then the square root of a minus the square root of b. Um, but another way to think of it is, you know, what times what gets you a squared? What times what gets you b squared? Well, it's, you know, b and a. And they give an example here. And I don't you do this middle part, but, you know, you, you, if you see the minus sign, you've got a binomial, binomial, you see the minus sign. See if you can write um, x squared as the same number, you know, times itself. So x times x, and then 9, 3 times 3 gets you 9, plus minus, and you're done. Now, recognizing the perfect squares might be a little bit of a challenge, um, but you, you do have a square root button in your calculator to help you out. Um, I normally would make a list of perfect squares for you to, to look at, but we'll, we'll save that um, for you to do on your own if you choose. All right, so let's use this pattern. So notice binomial degree two, so it's a quadratic. Um, it's subtracting. So um, what I would suggest you do is immediately write two sets of parentheses and then ask yourself, well, what times itself gets you x squared? Well, it's x times x. What times itself gets you 25? Well, it's five and five. And now you know that those were perfect squares and you're done. It's pretty awesome. And so on this one, um, we see a minus, it's a quadratic, it's a binomial. Let's try it out, see if it's a perfect square, um, uh, by a difference of two squares. So we can put a 2z here, a 2z here, a 1 and a 1, because 2z times 2z gets you 4z squared. 1 times 1 gets you 1, plus, minus, and we're done. So now, class, I gotta warn you, if you were to do the AC method, uh, what would you would do is you would realize that your middle term is zero. So when you get your AC of, in this case, it would be negative four, you would need to think of two numbers that add together to make zero. And, and it would be negative two and two. Um, but then what you would do is you would split up the middle term. So you would write it as four Z squared minus 2z plus 2z. So where there was a 0, now you have the minus 2z and the 2z, like so. And then you can group them and, you know, do the rest of the AC method. But it's so much easier to um, see the pattern. It'll save you so much more time. Uh, don't forget that sometimes you have to factor out a GCF, a greatest common uh, monomial. And so in this case, we can take out a 2 first divide, divide, and then after we do that, we got a difference of two squares. We've got dots, I'm seeing dots. All right, so we leave the two out front, two parentheses, x times x gets you x squared, six times six gets you negative 36, plus, minus. And on this next one, it looks like we can, yeah, I think we can factor out a GCF. It looks like we can take a three out. I believe, maybe more, we'll see. Divide, divide. 
Ah, uh, yeah, no, so that was the best we could do. And now we got, again, a difference of two squares. So check this out. What times what gets you 9n squared? 3n. What times what gets you 16? 4 plus minus, and you're done. All right, so that is dots, and you're going to get some practice, and I would, I would recommend you work that practice out. Um, now, for a perfect square trinomial pattern, um, it can be kind of a little bit complicated the way they're describing it here. What's tricky about it is the middle term has to be a certain way. So it's kind of cool. So if you have um, perfect square in front, perfect square in the back, you're going to write a single um, parentheses squared. It's going to be, you know, what times what gets you a squared, a, what times what gets you b squared, b. And then it's interesting, you use the sign of the middle term. Now, there's some, there's some problems out there that can be tricky, where they look like perfect square trinomials, but they're not, and it's because the middle term isn't correct. So what I like to do is, if I see the perfect squares, I go ahead and do the pattern, but then I check to see if it, it actually worked out. Multiply these together, a and b, and double it, and it should always equal the middle term. So it's kind of an interesting thing here, so check it out. Um, x times x gets you x squared. 3 times 3 gets you 9, so these are perfect squares. So you immediately, I, I just ignore this, immediately you write a parentheses, x, 3, and then the sign in the middle is what determines that it, it's being plus. This one's the same thing except the sign in the middle is a negative. So that's how that's going. All right, so perfect square trinomials. N squared, 16. All right, I'm gonna try it out. The pattern is a binomial squared. N, four, four times four gets us 16, and times N gets us N squared. And because of that plus sign, we write a plus and we're done. It's super quick if you recognize the pattern. Um, it looks like we might be able to um, factor out a GCF here, but no, three goes into nine, but yeah, nothing, okay. So, um, but check it out, perfect square. So what we can do, two X times two X gets four X squared. Three times three gets us nine, but now the middle sign is a negative. Now, um, I forgot we need to check. How you check is four times n gets you four n, double it is eight n. So we know that it was in fact a perfect square trinomial. Two x times negative three gets you negative six x, double it, you get negative 12 x. So it was in fact a perfect square trinomial. Um, back here, it looks like we can take out a GCF. Yeah, I'm pretty confident on that. Uh, let's take a nine out first, divide to find out what's left. And then class, we're left with the perfect square trinomial. So we go nine, a binomial squared. Z times Z gets us Z squared. Two times two gets us four, plus sign. And we factored it. I'm telling you, this saves you so much more, so much time over the AC method. But I do gotta warn you, if you don't check the middle term, you may be tricked. They, this may not be a perfect square trinomial, in which case you'd have to do the AC method. But notice um, two times Z gets us two Z, double it is four Z, so we know that our answer is good. Okay, on the back, we've got a vertical motion model, and I love these problems because it, it deals with the world that we live in with gravity. And this is a, I think this is an accurate setup. So this is gravity, this is the height that the object starts at. But, so gravity accelerates objects at a, at a consistent rate. And so that's why they can write equations for this. It's pretty cool, okay? So a bird picks up a golf ball. This represents the height of the ball in feet, t seconds after it's dropped. It says the ball hits the top of a 32 foot tall pine tree. After how many seconds does the ball hit the tree? So um, class, the, the bird's at 81 feet, it drops the ball, and we're wondering how long it takes to drop to 32 feet tall. 
Well, what we're going to do is we're going to put 32 in for y. And we're going to solve for t. So how we've learned to solve uh, at this point in this factoring unit is we're going to do the zero product property. So we're going to subtract the 32 over. And then 81 minus 32. I'm cheating. I'm using my notes instead of grabbing a calculator. And check this out. A binomial with subtraction. Let's see if it's a difference of two squares. I'm pretty sure it's dots. We'll, we'll check. What times what gets you 49? That's right, 7. What times what gets you 16t squared? 4t plus minus. We're done factoring. But now we get to actually solve this. So we're going to set 7 plus 4t equal to 0. 7 minus 4t equal to 0. Uh, on this one, we'll get negative 7 fourths. Um, and on this one, we'll get negative divided by negative, we'll get positive 7 fourths. Well, class, in this case, a negative time doesn't make sense in the problem. So our answer is 7 fourths or 1 and 3 quarters seconds. That's how long it took. So gravity acts fast, doesn't it? 81 feet to 32 feet in 1 and, a, in one and 3 quarters seconds. All right, do your practice. Enjoy.